Hi guys. It is a gorgeous December day. Actually feels like December here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. Deep in the heart of Texas here on this lovely Thursday morning, December 19th, 2019. And I am getting ready to have the great pleasure of interview. Oh, I'm sorry. My name is Sam Mitchell, and this is my little co-pilot, Sancho Panza, and we are the host of Collapse Chronicles, where you have somehow, uh, <laughs> don't know how you got here, uh, but I'm glad you found your way in, where we talk about the single biggest issue on the planet. And it has nothing to do with the I word. Uh, it has to do with the C word, meaning collapse. And so I am getting ready in one hour to have the pleasure of interviewing a fellow I have never, I had never heard of until a few weeks ago. This is a mathematician who, uh, out of Virginia, a fellow by the name of Sid Smith, Dr. Sidney Smith. And Sid Smith, uh, he gets it. Th th this man understands. He has a YouTube channel. I think it's just called the Sid Smith YouTube channel. He only has two videos on it, but they are two of the best videos I have ever seen about this and I really encourage you to go uh, watch those videos. I have just watched both of them all the way through two times. Anybody trying to uh, figure out what is going on here in the early part of the 21st century has got to. This is indispensable and strangely enough, uh, Sid does have a website and you go on it, and there's it's like he has recipes, his favorite recipes and things. And in in the middle of this uh, of this otherwise fairly uh, innocuous, but but you know, nice website, he has this uh, little essay from November of 2012 simply titled, All the Bunnies in the Meadow Die. And he talks about this in one of those videos uh, on, his, uh, on his YouTube channel. This is, and guys, <clears throat> particularly if you're just coming down in this bunny hole, if you're, if you're just wandering into this meadow, uh, down into this rabbit hole. This is one of the single best. Is the word primer or primer uh, that I have ever read that goes along with his videos. Or if you just want the best recap of everything that I have been talking about, it is All the Bunnies in the Meadow Die, where Sid Smith just spells it out. And this is a long, involved essay. I'm going to put the link and encourage you to read it yourself. I'm just going to hit some of the highlights, <clears throat> particularly the conclusions, so uh, I can help prepare myself and you for the interview. I am getting quite a bit backed up, so it's going to be probably late January uh, before I will be publishing this conversation. So in the meantime, to uh, whet your appetite, uh, <clears throat> we're just going to pick out a few things that he talks about. And then, uh, so what he talks about, about all the, all the, bunnies in the meadow must die. What it is is just one more way of s s talking about exponential growth and carrying capacity. Uh, where, you know, when an, when an animal, in this case he's using rabbits, uh, 
you know, reach the carrying capacity of their environment when they use up all their resources, eventually, and namely food, when there is nothing left to eat, the population crashes. This is sometimes, you might be called the Malthusian model. So he goes through, uh, this is the, the simplified uh, version of this. Uh, so he talks about rabbits for a while and then to as an introduction to the next species which would be humans. And we're going to start here. Humans are an altogether different kind of animal than rabbits. There is nothing to play the role of coyotes you know, to keep our numbers in check. For us, we are at the top of the food chain. We don't have to depend any longer on natural processes alone for our food because with machinery and fertilizers and science, we can extract from Mother Nature far more than she would give on her own. Disease also, while not conquered, is nothing like the scourge it once was. With the aid of technology, we can fit vast numbers of us into comparatively small spaces, otherwise known as cities. There are few natural forces left to constrain our numbers, and because of this, our rate of population growth increased dramatically in the 20th century while our doubling, our population doubling time decreased from half a millennium to half a century. Humans are a different kind of animal, but not so different that the laws of mathematics don't apply to us. And what the mathematician uh, Sid Smith does is he applies the laws of mathematics to humanity, to uh, our global industrial civilization, and to the planet, basically. Okay. We live in a finite meadow called the Earth. There is no other to which we might go. With all our knowledge and all our technology, there is still an absolute limit to how much this meadow can provide. We are not as prolific as rabbits. Well, uh, but our population is, when he wrote this uh, in 2012, but our population is 7 billion and growing, and our current doubling time is about 65 years. And we are in overshoot, meaning we are already, uh, we are the rabbits. Uh, getting ready to crash. We are in overshoot. It is not a question of if we will overshoot our environment, and it is not a question of when. We are in overshoot right now. Sometime in the 1970s came the first year when the ecological footprint of humanity became so large that the impact on our planet was no longer sustainable. Now, some 30 to 40 years later, we use up about 150 percent of the planet's yearly supply of resources every year. In effect, if we apply the rabbits in the meadow analogy, we are at the point of eating the stems. 
There are several aspects that must be considered in measuring the degree and effects of human overshoot. <clears throat> they include the availability of food, the availability of water, the availability of energy, and they also include biodiversity and last but soon not to be least climate change. Each of these affects all the others and uh, then he breaks it down to in, in this analysis he just goes through the high points of food, water, waste disposal, energy, biodiversity, and climate change. And as I say, it would take me two hours to uh, read this. What I'm just going to do is read the first paragraph of each of these, and then we're going to get to the conclusions. Let's start with food. Predictions of mass starvation owing to overpopulation have been made for 200 years, but have not come to pass. <clears throat> this is because our capacity to produce food has increased far beyond what was predicted. In the last 45 years in particular, food production globally has more than doubled keeping pace with the growth in our population <clears throat> even though the amount of land used for agriculture has scarcely increased at all. The green revolution as it is called is the result of four factors which he breaks down. <clears throat> Increased irrigation from underground aquifers, which as he explains, but I don't have time to get into, are also in overshoot. <clears throat> so irrigation from overshot aquifers is the number one <clears throat> way. Manufactured fertilizers and pesticides, meaning manufactured from fossil fuels, the use of machinery to efficiently plant, harvest, process, and distribute food, all of which is 100% dependent on fossil fuels, and the development of higher yielding, more disease and insect resistant crops. However, currently a billion people do not get sufficient nutrition and an additional billion people are at risk. Moreover, in order to keep pace with the population, food production will have to double again in the next 35 years. And this was written in 2012 and this cannot happen. Instead, Food production is going to decline soon and before long decline drastically. One reason is that three of the four factors that made the Green Revolution possible cannot be sustained. And then he breaks down uh, depleting aquifers and all the the use of fossil fuels uh, breaks all of this down. Then he looks at the collapse of fisheries. Uh, if you think we're going to, uh, if you think the oceans are going to save us, and then he breaks down, then, then he goes into the whole thing about uh, meat consumption growing worldwide about the you know beef main beef pork chicken uh, how uh, the problems with that uh, anyway so guys again this is uh, you have to read this for yourself 
Uh, as I say, this is might be sort of ABCs for some of us down here, but it's always good to uh, refresh yourself and see it spelled out so succinctly. Okay, from food to water. And again, I'm just going to read. I'm just going to read the first paragraph of each of these sections. Humans need fresh water. Without it, we die in a week. We need water that is uncontaminated by pollutants, disease, organisms, and parasites. I noticed that Garfield, Texas, we are under, we have been warned, we are under a boil water warning here in Garfield. They give us no explanation. We have been warned here in Garfield, Texas, today that we are supposed to boil our drinking water. There you go. Uh, <laughs> to sustain a civilized existence, we need extra water for sanitation, both for body cleanliness and to safely process human bodily waste. At present, about a billion people do not have adequate drinking water. They and an additional billion and a half people do not have adequate water for sanitation, a number that is increasing rapidly. Half of the world's sick are sick because of inadequate water and it is the leading cause of death for young children. There is no longer this is no longer just a third world problem, as indicated by the boil water warning uh, all over Garfield, Texas. 80% of the global population is exposed to high levels of threat to water security. That is 5.6 billion people. Okay, I'm going to move along to waste, from water to waste, from the faucet to the toilet. Each of 315 million Americans generates, on average, nearly four and a half pounds of waste every day. Together, we, just here in America, produce about 250 million tons every year. This is three times the amount we produced just 50 years ago. Although Americans produce more waste per person than in any other country, the rest of the world is catching up with us. <coughs> Precise estimates are difficult, but total solid waste production worldwide is in the billions of tons. The World Bank recently warned that this portends an economic and environmental burden as catastrophic as climate change. Then he continues to break that one down and then from waste to energy, which probably takes the biggest uh, honk of this essay, energy. Uh, there are just a few sources of energy on Earth, uh, blah, 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 but of course he quickly gets down to fossil fuels, uh, which is what uh, takes the, uh, what takes the, uh, the big part of his talk on energy, of course, uh, you know, all of this about energy uh, in, energy out, all of that, but he breaks all this down about fossil fuels. Okay, let's get to the, what he's all leading up to, all of this leading up to biodiversity and climate change. Okay. Biodiversity. Uh, again, I'm just going to read the first paragraph. 
comparatively few of the millions of species of plants and animals are by themselves of obvious importance to humans and our survival. However, every species of plant or animal is part of a complex web of relationships that sustain a stable ecosystem. Changing those relationships by reducing or removing any one or more species can have far-reaching consequences and it is impossible to predict at what point such interference, meaning at what point such human interference will cause the ecosystem to break down. <clears throat> the destruction of any ecosystem is a direct threat to humans because we depend on healthy ecosystems for processes that are essential to our survival. Then he breaks that down and finally bringing up <clears throat> The last but not least tale of this breakdown of the impending collapse is climate change. Again, just reading the first paragraph, climate change. The earth is not a stable environment, but a profoundly complex system undergoing continual change. The present temperate climate in particular is neither permanent nor even typical. Even the recent geological past has seen periods of both warmer and colder weather. The constant changes in climate are owing to many factors. Blah, blah, blah. I presently, the Earth is getting warmer. What is different this time is that it is getting warmer much faster than can be explained by any known natural processes. This can only be explained by the influence of humanity and climate change is therefore also a feature of over Shoot. Uh, okay, so let's wrap one more paragraph on climate change and then we're going to get to the bottom line of what uh, Sid Smith has to say. Okay, the one certain consequence of climate change is increased stress to already overburdened natural and agricultural systems. The very recent past provides a number of examples as the severe worldwide droughts in most of the last 10 years causing major food shortages and an unrelenting series of severe floods, storms, and forest fires in the United States and elsewhere around the world during the same period. Remember guys, he wrote this seven years ago. This year, has 2012, has seen record-setting droughts with serious implications for the global food supply. Okay, <clears throat> the bottom line of climate change, and I'm going to send this out to Book Hermit. I'm not sure Book Hermit understands the bottom line on climate change. Global warming is an overshoot accelerant. One more time. Global warming is an overshoot which we are in now accelerant. It magnifies, exacerbates, and hastens all those other effects of human overpopulation, which means that while it is not the number one 
uh, biggest threat facing this planet now with each passing year climate change becomes uh, is coming from the back of the pack of the nine planetary boundaries if the other eight planetary boundaries don't kill us all climate change will ex magnify and exacerbate the other eight planetary boundaries this is not rocket science but anyway let's get to uh, Sid Smith's conclusions about the state of the planet in 2012 and of course in our interview we are going to update this to uh, the opening bell of 2020. Okay, take it away Sid Smith. <clears throat> it is difficult to summarize the consequences of human overshoot and even more difficult to draw specific conclusions about its final outcome. As the physicist Niels Bohr remarked, prediction is difficult, especially of the future. <clears throat> However, if you see someone stacking blocks one atop another into a high tower, <coughs> And if that tower gets many times higher than the base that supports it, you can say with certainty that if the blocks keep being added, it will topple over. You cannot say exactly when it will topple. You can't say in what direction it will topple. You can't say <coughs> whether the collapse will begin at the bottom or somewhere in the middle. But, but, you can still know with a certainty that it must fall and fall soon. Thank you, Zip. It is also true that the sheer number of people on Earth, can you say blocks in the tower, is not by itself what determines the severity of our overshoot. It is the average rate of consumption multiplied by the population. In this respect, Americans have much to answer for because our ecological footprint is already several times larger than most of the rest of humanities. And of course, as he mentioned earlier, <clears throat> everybody else is making it their number one priority to catch up with Americans. If everyone on Earth consumed as much as the average American, all of, a, all of us would have perished long before now. So, there are two things we can say with certainty. <clears throat> First, the size of the human population will drop very substantially. Estimates of the carrying capacity of the planet vary widely, but those estimates that take account of the facts presented here are much lower than our current population. When we also take into account the severe degradation of the planet's ecosystems that is yet to occur. We must be even more pessimistic. How the drop in population will occur, when it will begin to occur, how long it will last, and 
what the population will be afterward is impossible to know. It may be disease or war or the default famine. It is likely to be a combination of things, but it cannot be avoided. The second thing we can say with certainty is that the rate of human consumption must decrease to a small fraction of the current average in the developed world. In particular, anything like our current consumer culture will be quite impossible. Human ecological overshoot is the defining fact of life on Earth for the foreseeable future. It is the number one story on the planet. It is the number one story in the history of humanity since we climbed down from the trees. This is why I have uh, devoted my life to talking about this subject. Sid Smith has, in his last paragraph, sums it up. Human ecological overshoot is the defining fact of life on Earth for the foreseeable future. This issue, human ecological overshoot, does not just dwarf other issues. It absorbs every issue, political, cultural, economic, and of course, most important, environmental into itself. Far too many people are still asking, how can we avoid the consequences of overshoot? This is like someone who is already falling, asking how to avoid hitting the ground. The right question is, how can we best cope with and mitigate the consequences? How do we shape our, our lives to fit the future we have made for ourselves, or rather not our lives, for that die is cast? What can we do now so that our children's children's children may have a world to live in in freedom, dignity, and peace. Uh, and of course, we will be uh, asking the big questions of Sid Smith, uh, who is one of the few uh, people out there uh, with the cojones to talk about the number one biggest issue on this planet, and it is not the impeachment of Donald Trump. Anyway, uh, so I am getting ready in 30 minutes to call and talk to Dr. Sid Smith about his advice uh, for anyone, uh, for the few people on this planet who have any interest in what we talk about here at Collapse Chronicles. So, uh, if you are one of the chosen few willing to face the truth with a capital T, uh, and you enjoyed this video, please take a few seconds to thumb it up. If you did not enjoy this video and you think Sid Smith is wrong, uh, take a few seconds to thumb it down and maybe leave a comment why you think this man is wrong. And of course, if you would like to subscribe to Collapse Chronicles, uh, by all means do so, so you can hear uh, more interviews with people like Sid Smith, 
Who is it coming out this Sunday? Oh yes, uh, the uh, I guess you would call it a conversation I have with Collapsitarian Gilbert Mercier. Uh, Gilbert Mercier uh, pulls no punches in our second to the last interview of 2019. You can find that on Sunday. Anyway, guys, uh, get out there and enjoy the end of the world while you still can. Bye, guys.